In this video we're going to talk a little bit about the VE table and how to identify and fix anomalies in that table. Uh, to begin with, let's go over here to the VE table page and we're going to load up a default table. Now what this is, uh, this is an idealized table. Um, by that I mean in a perfect world, VE is low down here around idle. Uh, it increases with RPM up until about peak VE, which is usually around 5,000 to 6,000 RPM, and then it starts dropping. Uh, as load increases in the engine, VE also increases. So with those rules in mind, you end up with a VE table that looks uh, something similar to this. Now, of course, we don't live in a perfect world, so your VE table is going to have some dips or small glitches and other odd things in it, possibly due to uh, your motor, your setup, injector response, cams, things like that. But overall, it should have this this general look to it uh, should be somewhere around 100 or maybe a little above down here at peak V and peak load uh, should fall off after peak V all the way down and then uh, have nice smooth contours uh, from cell to cell for the best performance so with that said let's look at a real world situation uh, if I come over to log chart I've got a log loaded up it's just a third gear pull uh, that I did in my car if I go over to the ECM link I can grab a table and we will put that into here. Oops, I'm going to be on that page first. We'll paste that into our VE table page. And it's also stored, by the way. I'll go ahead and mention this. If you go to Preferences, there's a new option on the General Options tab here that uh, to automatically store backups of tables when pasting. Uh, before, what you had to do is paste and then hit uh, Store Current Values if you wanted to undo your changes. Uh, with this new option, it just does that for you. So. I can come in here and make changes, do whatever I want to the table, and then I just say restore save values. So it saves a bit of time, makes things easier. So anyway, here's our VE table. Uh, doesn't look too bad, kind of follows the general rule. It's low over here in idle, increases to peak VE, then starts dropping off, increases with RPM. Uh, I'm at 100 down here around peak VE and peak load, so overall it looks pretty good, except for this one little area right here. Um, that little area happens to be because of the uh, injector response in my car and I've always run um, a little bit rich right here at, at 3500 so I have to drop VE a little bit and again it's just carbon my injectors but other than that the table looks pretty good on the surface uh, but what we find out is that there's a lot of little anomalies in this table that are somewhat hidden unless you look really close for them um, those anomalies are areas where airflow goes up then it goes back down uh, doesn't quite follow the rules um, that it should be so that may or may not affect performance it might cause the ECU to to make little changes to airflow that it shouldn't and it just you know it's just generally not not acceptable to have anything in there that you don't need in there put it that way so anyway link tools gives us a, uh, a tool to, to find that and it's right up here show anomalies now this used to be on the preferences page but it's moved up here where it makes uh, makes more sense on the VE table so anyway if I click that you can see a bunch of little anomalies pop up in this this uh, VE table that otherwise didn't look too bad uh, what this is each of these cells is somehow breaking that uh, breaking that rule of increasing VE uh, through peak uh, peak VE and then falling off and then increasing with load so anyway we want to correct and fix these anomalies now there's a couple ways to do it. I could just select the entire table and work on that, or I can come in and pick areas that are specific uh, that I want to work on without bothering other areas. Now, since I don't want to mess with this area in here because I know I need that uh, that drop because of the way my injectors perform, I'm going to actually go in and select everything except that. And you can just hold the control key down, pick different areas here. We'll pick those and maybe the first three of those. So once you've got selected what you want to work with, you just right click and say fix anomalies and that's it. Link Tools goes in there and uh, makes small corrections to bring everything into, uh, into line with the way it should be. Now you'll notice the red numbers, those are cells that it increased. The blue numbers are cells that it um, uh, dropped. So it made small minor corrections across the board here in the areas I had highlighted to uh, avoid those anomalies and it left this because I told it to. Now if you want to see what that actually compares to as far as how much change it made 
uh, I can go over here to VE Table 2, and since I stored uh, Table 1 when I brought it in, if I just hit Restore from Table 2, it will bring in the saved version of that before I made any changes. So here you can see the way it looked before I made any changes, and here's how it looks after I made them. So now if I go to Table Comparison, it will actually show me the amount that each cell was changed when it made those corrections. And you can see from this that uh, this one cell right here was, was pretty major. Everything else is within reason. Um, it only changed them by one or uh, half, half of, uh, of a value. So it's not a percentage per se, but half a point, one point on each VE cell here. Now I can also look at that in 3D if you want to get a better idea. Um, but anyway, it was just that one cell there, and it was probably way off to begin with. So that would explain why that one changed. If we go over here and look at table 2, you can see that it, I was up here at 50, and then 50, almost 50 here, but that one was 40, so that one was obviously wrong to begin with. So when I did the automatic corrections on it, um, it brought that up considerably to make it uh, fall more in line. So anyway, that's a good example of uh, using the anomalies uh, checkbox or searching function and then the repair to get a table in shape. So now with that said let's go look at some uh, some other tables here. Let's look at the stock VE table. We'll bring that one in. Paste it. This is the uh, stock VE table that comes with ECM link. Uh, looks pretty much like the other one did except you can see it's a lot more blocky. Uh, there's also some things in it that jump out at you. You can see it goes from 57 to 63 and a half, then 67, but then drops back down, goes up, drops down. Um, it's, again, it's probably not ideal. I'm not sure where the numbers came from. Um, by the looks of it being blocky like this, I would guess that there's certain tests were done in certain points, and they picked up a number that worked in that point, and then just uh, made surrounding cells match it. But again, in an ideal you know, situation, what you want to start with is a smoother table and without these anomalies in it. So anyway, there's a couple things we can do here. Um, let's just go ahead and, and save this to table 2 so we've got a copy of it in both tables. And we'll make some changes and take a look at it. First thing is, let's look at the anomalies in it. And you can see they show up pretty clearly. Uh, the columns here, where columns go, it's increasing, then it drops and increases and drops. Same thing with the rows. So we'll just select the entire table and hit Fix Anomalies. That fixes that. So now everything follows those generalized rules. And you can see it didn't change a whole lot. Uh, come over here. Everything's within 2.5 to 3.5. So that would put everything in line as far as following the rules. But now if you'll notice, it's still really choppy. Um, the ECU is going to make quick changes or, or uh, more more dynamic changes than it probably should have to. Um, for example, out here you got 89.5 jumping to 93.5, 92.5 jumping to 96.5, so on and so forth. So let's go back to what we started with here. Um, what we can do with this is rather than just fix the anomalies, we can also do a smoothing function. So if I select the entire table again, there is now a new function down here called Smooth Selected Cells. And again, it works on just what you've got selected uh, or the entire table. And we'll go ahead and do the entire table here. And you can see it made all the changes. And now you'll notice, if you'll notice how smooth it is, let me reset the formatting here. You can tell that everything's a nice smooth transition, but it didn't do much to change the general uh, layout or values of the table. So if we do a table comparison, you can see the areas that it smoothed and blended, um, but it kept the general overall shape. Now, that smoothing probably didn't do anything for the anomalies. In fact, it might have created one or two. And you can see it just shifted the way the anomalies are laid out. But now we've got it smooth. We can go in there and fix the anomalies, and we end up with um, our final table that we would start with. You can see it's nice transitions. It follows the rules. There's no anomalies. Now, that will probably have to be tweaked, and it won't end up this way in the end, but this will give you a good idea of what there is to, um, or what tools you have to begin with uh, a nice table, something you can start working on. So, let's call up another table here and look at. And we'll just pick, uh, pick this one. This is an interesting table. You can see with this one, there's several anomalies here. Um, one of the problems with this table is 
there's obviously been a pull done and some corrections made down here where it needed to be but nothing was done in the surrounding cells and this is the most common thing you'll see um, as you work on these tables you're going to end up working on certain areas at the table more than others and you'll get those cells fixed but nothing's done to fix the other cells now like these numbers out here don't really matter because your car's never going to hit that point just like these up here probably will never get hit but it's still nice to have nice smooth transitions in a table that's fully calibrated and one of the things that the uh, anomalies tool does is let you do that so for example with these right here we know that VE shouldn't ever drop below this high point of 103 so if we do a correction on this part of the log you can see it'll just go ahead and fill in those cells based on those numbers and then the same thing out here it knows what the table should be doing so it'll go ahead and correct those for you and again if you wanted you could select those cells and also smooth them which as you can see that created more anomalies because we didn't smooth all the other areas uh, beside it so anyway that gives you an idea on uh, how to use the anomaly tool and all that now there's some parameters that can be set that'll actually control that and got a test table here that'll show it a little better we'll paste this one in this one I've specifically got set up with um, rows and columns and the reason for that is if you look at the anomalies you'll see some some column errors here and then some rows now in the preferences under V corrections there are new options that control how it how it finds and, and fixes these anomalies uh, to begin with let's look at peak VE low RPM and high RPM these two numbers here determine or, or define where your peak and uh, peak RPM range is. By default, it's usually about uh, 5,500 to 6,000. You can make it the entire table if you want, or you can make it one cell, if you or one column if you want. Um, the default usually works fine. But what this does is this is what tells Link Tools when uh, RPM increases should shift the VE to start falling off. So when it's going through here finding corrections, it's going to get to this point and look for increasing airflow, and then after that it's going to look for decreasing airflow or airflow that stays the same. Uh, if the range is wider than three columns, then it will look for increasing airflow here. In the, this range here, it will look for cells that are um, higher than both surrounding cells, and then average those to get a nice curve, and then on this side it will look for decreasing B. So that's what those two numbers do. Um, iterations is the number of times through the loop. As you correct errors, like we saw in that smoothing will go, when you correct one set of anomalies, it usually creates another, unless you're doing the entire table where it can look at every cell. So what this does is let you change the number of passes through the uh, routines. Usually three is fine. You can do an entire table normally with that. Um, we'll go ahead and like if I select this entire table and say fix anomalies, you can see it went through, it probably only took two passes on this, but three is just safe to get any remaining cells. Uh, so anyway, that just lets you set the, the number of iterations or passes through it if you need to. Three should be fine. Then over here, there's three different ways to do corrections. Um, you can correct rows only, columns only, or both. And what that means is if you pick rows only, it's only going to look to see if the number above and below a current cell are correct. So for example, the 75, when it tests this cell, it's only going to see if that one is the same or lower, and if that one's the same or higher. Uh, likewise, if you do columns, it's going to do the same thing going this way. Um, it's it's going to look for a, a lower airflow on this side of the cell, a higher on that side, if you're past peak VE, or it's going to average um, in the middle, look for averages in a, in a wider VE range. So columns, it's only checking across the table for the rules. Rows only down and both. It's actually doing um, on each cell, it's checking everything around it and then going to the next one and using that number to get um, to get the changes it needs for the for the VE table. So if we do rows only on this table, you can see that it left the column errors because those are still jumping this way. They don't follow the rules, but it fixed the row errors just as you'd expect. So likewise, we can do the same with columns. Select entire table and fix it. And you can see it, it followed the rules going across the table, but it didn't do anything as far as these rules. So it just gives you different ways to um, make changes to the table. Normally, correct 
both rows and columns um, is what you're going to want. Uh, you know, 90% of the time because the other thing is you can only you can work on just what you want to work on. So that lets you do uh, do major corrections in both directions, but only on small parts of the log if you want. So anyway, that's a little bit about the uh, VE table anomalies checking and correcting. And um, in other videos, we'll get into some more things you can do with the VE table and some of the other uh, features that are coming up.